being poor is a disease of the mind and rich people are filthy and take advantage of others to make their money. Do any of those get you riled up? If so, this is for you. Guys, what's going on? Gabriel King, your CEO and founder of Healthpreneur. Welcome to another episode of Hashtag Winning. And today we're gonna to be talking about stop taking things so personally. Uh, Lao Tzu has a really great quote that says, care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. And that's what I want to talk with you about today. And I'll share why this has come up recently. But just to give you an analogy of this, like when we take things personally, this is something I talk with my kids about all the time. When we take things personally, uh, whether it's a negative comment or someone who said something, it's like, imagine wearing a backpack and every single time someone says something to you and you internalize it, you're adding a rock into that backpack and you're walking through life and you just keep adding more rocks into the knapsack. You think that's gonna be a little bit more challenging like to live life like that? I think the answer is yes, right? So I think the importance of um, learning this lesson is that number one, you're gonna gain a lot more emotional freedom. You're gonna boost your self-confidence and I think you'll navigate life's challenges like a pro as opposed to being super reactive and getting all bent out of shape anytime someone says anything that's not even directed at you, or even if it is, being able to deflect it. If you're able to do this properly in terms of like not taking things personally, you will not be a slave to other people's opinions. Um, you'll make better business decisions, and I'll give you some examples in a moment, because you're not gonna make rash decisions based on one person's opinion. And there's a really good book that I have um, I shared with my kids called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And one of the, I think it's the first agreement is don't take anything personally. So if you want a good reminder of what I'm sharing here, read the book. So uh, there's a couple stories of how this shows up in the context of like business. Uh, and, that, and that's kind of the, the context in which I want to share this. Because as I've said before, the number one thing that's going to hold you back from your dreams is your fear of being disliked. Said otherwise, you care more about what other people think of you more than what you care about what you think of you. So I'll give you a couple examples of how this shows up in my life. As you know, we run a lot of ads and we get some pretty ridiculous comments on our ads. So someone leaves a comment like, hey man, your webinar is too long. Whoa, guys, guys, all hands meeting. Some troll on the internet said our webinar is too long. We got to change everything. No. Right? You're not going to change. I'm not going to change anything for one person's comments. Now, if everyone said the same thing, okay, I'm going to take that with a little more consideration. But someone is like, your webinar is too long. Get to the point. This is an undercover sales pitch. Thank you. All the best. Because I know for every one person that says that, there are hundreds or thousands of others who are not saying anything who are actually enjoying that quote unquote long ass webinar. Here's another one. Someone in our worlds didn't like being sold to. Well, in that case, we got to be a lot more rapport-ish. We got to change our whole approach to selling. We got to be a lot more nurturing and comforting and giving people tissues and, and soothing their... Fuck that. You think we're going to change our whole sales process because one person didn't like being sold to, even though we're not really selling to them. We're just asking questions to see if it's a good fit. Here's another example. Um, and this is actually quite, this is interesting that a lot of uh, stand-up comics talk a lot about this as well, is Dave Chappelle talked about this. A lot of comic comedians talked about this. They've gone up on stage and they've said something, right? And someone or several people in the audience or watching on TV got personally offended. And they're like, just to be clear, I was not insulting you. I was not talking to you. And this is comedy. Take it easy. Don't take it so personally. So in, in uh, recently, I posted two things on Facebook that I'm going to read for you here, um, which got some interesting conversation. So number one is I've noticed those who don't like selling or being sold to often don't have much money to spend. Many people agreed. Some people got pissed. Huh. So if I'm sharing my personal experience as an observation and some random person who's in my network of friends or followers gets feels personally attacked by that, what does that say about them? It says, I think a lot about them uh, in the sense like, why would that offend you? Because the only, <laughs> the only way it offends you if you think if it's true for you. So I said, I've noticed, okay? Observation, not empirical facts. I've noticed that those who don't like being sold to you 
often, okay? I'm not saying always, often. Don't have much money to spend. So if you don't have much money or if you just don't like being sold to, you're, again, I'm just observing this. People get fucking, they take it all personally. I'm like, dude, I didn't act tag your name and say you get, like, you don't have any money. I said, I've often noticed this. I'm like, why are you getting all bent out of shape here? And then like, people are attacking me. Like, you're the problem. I'm like, okay, unfriending and blocking. Like, whatever. Here's another one. I've noticed, noticed how I started. I've noticed, not it's empirical fact. I've noticed very often, once again, I've noticed often, the smallest houses have the biggest TVs. That one got a lot more, I agree with you on that. Because I was just walking through a neighborhood one evening and I noticed like these small houses had these fucking huge TVs in the living room. And I'm like, well, usually, and I'm again, I'm, I'm making an observation that some people get bent out of shape around. There is a correlation between how much TV you watch and how much money you make. If you live in a really small little house and you've got a big TV, I'm going to make some generalizations about how you show up in the world. That's just the way it's going to be. Is it, is, it, is it a stereotype or is it pattern recognition? If your car is a fucking dump, wrappers all over the place, garbage, food everywhere, do you think, do you think I might and someone else might make some judgments about how you show up in life? You better believe it. Versus if your car is pristine, clean, beautifully vacuumed and manicured all the time, do you think that I might think that that's how you show up in every other aspect of your life? Uh, you better believe it because how you do anything is how you do everything. Some people are like, well, you know, like big houses have big TVs too. I'm like, yeah, I, I get that. But they also have really big libraries and they spend a lot of their time reading. Now, you could also say, well, Yuri, correlation is not causation. And here's the thing is like, I agree. I agree. I'm not saying because you have a small house, you have a big TV or because you have a big TV, you don't have money. I'm not saying it's causation. I'm saying there is a tendency a correlation, okay? Again, like, I, I feel that people get bent out of shape because they just want to add, add fire to the fire. Now, again, this, this video, I'm going to catch myself saying stuff that I'm going to refute to myself, if that even makes sense. So, for example, well, Yuri, why would you post something like that if you know it's going to rile some people up? Well, because that's what I do. It's, it's I post thoughts that I'm thinking and I think can stimulate some interesting dialogue and or internal thinking. Now, does everything I post piss people off or rile people up? No. Does some of it? Yeah. Am I trying to, uh, by nature, do that? No. If you recall, one of the videos uh, a few weeks ago was I donated to the devil, right? So I donated to the devil. I was talking about how I donated 20 bucks to Justin Trudeau, who's a fucking piece of shit. And then we actually use that as an email to our email list. Guess what happened? We had the most unsubscribes out of any email we sent in the past couple months. But guess what? I'm super pumped about that because I don't want anyone on my list who actually thinks that person is a decent human, okay? Now, I don't share anything politically typically, maybe once a year. And if some people get bent out of shape by that, cool. Ciao, amigo. We're not doing anything anyways. So we are, again, I'm not saying we should just speak without thinking, right? We should obviously think before we speak. And I think the more we think before we speak, the better off it's going to be. But I also don't want you nor myself to allow the fear of what other people might internalize your observation of as a personal attack. And therefore you think because that's going to happen, you don't share what you want to share. Stop taking things so personally. I was on um, a drive last fall with uh, about five other friends who have supercars as well. And we're driving through this town and this uh, we parked to go to the bathroom and we parked them on the street and this lady in a pickup truck drives by and rolls down her window and she said, fuck you, you rich pricks. Need I say more? Do I need to know anything more about how she sees the world? Like what? Where does that even come from? How fucked up is your worldview and your own belief system that you have to shout that out to six guys who just happen to be going for a drive with nice cars, right? So anyways, I don't, I don't get personally attacked by that. I mean, like, so that one was directed at us. Like that was like, a, like literally throwing a stone at us because she thought we were bad because we had money. That's, that's a belief system that doesn't support her. Am I going to get personally offended by that? No, I mean, it's, it's almost laughable. Here's the thing is like, when you get attacked over and over again, be it online or in person, you develop talents. 
You either let it really sink into you and it destroys you or you develop callus. And I've had to develop callus because if you look, and uh, am I saying like when people call me uh, a scam artist, uh, Mr. Clean, uh, here's another uh, business guru who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Do you think that any of that stuff affects me? The majority of it doesn't because I've seen so much of it that I actually smile. And it's, it's, I'm just like, I feel bad. I, I kind of really, I feel bad for like, you're a father, a mom, um, and you're speaking like this online. Like you're, 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 you're like, people can see this. Like I can click on your profile and see that you go to church or whatever. You've got a family. I'm like, do you have no, like, I don't even know. So I, I kind of feel bad to be honest, because I'm like, what is like, how bad is your life that you have to take time out of your day to leave a nasty comment on a post or an ad? Because here's, you could say like, well, Yuri, your ad showed up in my newsfeed and I didn't ask for that. I get it, right? I get it. But you could just ignore it. I'm not saying you, I'm just saying, you know, those, those weirdos out there. But yet people feel so compelled to share their two cents to someone that's not even related in any way, shape or form to their world. Like if you look at Instagram now, Instagram has become a lot more like TikTok, which is more uh, using more content graph as opposed to social graph. So you're now seeing random content from anyone, not just your friends. And so I see this content, like suggested posts, suggest, I'm like, I don't know who this person is. Why am I going to leave a comment? Like, this is the stupidest piece of shit I've ever, why would I even think of leaving a comment like that? If I don't like it, I just keep scrolling, just ignore it and move on. Okay. So I want to share three reasons why I think this happens. Uh, there's a bunch of psychological biases that we as humans have. There's like there's more than like 50 of them. It's crazy. So there's three of them that I think are very interesting to consider with respect to taking things personally and why people do this type of stuff. So the first one is the bandwagon effect. And the bandwagon effect is essentially people jump on the bandwagon. So let's look at this in context of your stuff that you put up online. If so for us, we have a policy, which is if there's a negative comment on our ads that doesn't contribute to the conversation, it gets deleted. And the reason it gets deleted is because of the bandwagon effect. If we leave it there, what do you think is going to happen? Misery loves company. So you have one troll or whoever leaves a negative, nasty comment. And then someone's going to also be like, yeah, fuck this guy. Screw Mr. Clean. Another scam artist. Blah, 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 blah. Now, is everyone going to do that? No. But I don't even want to create the environment for people to even have the option. So what I get excited about is when people leave a huge paragraph, like they spent a lot of time really like, I don't know you, but I, I hate you. They have this huge paragraph. And then we're just like, uh, delete, Gonzo. Thanks so much. Ciao. So the bandwagon effect works in both ways. If you want positivity and good conversation, only allow that on your stuff. And if you want everything else, you can keep everything else. I will play devil's advocate to what I just said. I, I think there is a danger in having a very myopic bubble around us. So what I mean by that is this, let's say we have a post that we remove all negative comments from. The only thing we are seeing is one view, right? Positivity, I support this, I'm all for that. And I, and I do think at scale, that becomes a little bit dangerous because we actually don't consider the other side of the coin. And I think this is, this is a very, very big problem during COVID where people saw one side of the story. They were fed one piece, one source of information, and they were not exposed to all of the information. So we started as a society, ma making decisions out of fear and limited information because all of the other information was being suppressed, right? Facebook did this, Instagram did this, you know, Google, Google did this. And that's a very, that's, for me, that was the scariest part of the whole thing is you are purposely limiting the viewpoints and valid information and empirical data to support a different agenda than what you're pushing. So you could say, well, Yuri, if you don't allow uh, other people's opinions on your stuff, that's essentially what you're doing as well. And I 100% agree with that because that's what's happening. And that's what I'm making the conscious choice of doing. So am I better than the politicians who are playing that negative nasty game? I think so because my intention is to create a safe space that empowers people to make better decisions for themselves. How does allowing hate speech in my ads or my social posts have any benefit for anyone else? It doesn't. So I'm not going to entertain that. So the bandwagon effect is essentially that, is people are much more likely to do what other people are doing. So if all of your stuff is negativity and hate comments, 
it's going to encourage more people to share more of that stuff, okay? The second one, and I think this is a very, very important, this is probably one of the most important biases we all have to be aware of. It's the confirmation bias. So the confirmation bias is essentially we will all our brain, the reticular activating system, if you will, is looking for anything that supports how we see the world. So let's go back to that lady in the pickup truck who called us fucking rich, rich pricks. She is looking for any evidence in the real world that supports that belief. Oh, she sees some guys in supercars. They must be, they must be pricks right? She probably drives by a nice house and thinks the people in that house are evil. You know what I'm saying? So this one is really, this is very important because we're very strongly associated to beliefs that we have. And if stuff really triggers us emotionally, we will be looking for things to support our own confirmation of that thing. So let's go back to the example of what I shared on Facebook. As the, I'll just read it again. So I've noticed that those who don't like being, uh, who don't like selling or being sold to often don't have much money to spend. Now, that's a confirmation bias for me because I am looking for evidence in the world where people who are not in a good financial position are looking for excuses for their situation, okay? So 100%, I am using confirmation bias there, okay? Now, on the flip side, the people who responded with like, you're, you're the problem, blah, 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 blah. They also have a confirmation bias, which is almost maybe the opposite, right? So people who um, have a problem being sold to, that's going to trigger something for them. And if they are very strongly emotionally connected to that, they are going to take it personally in a lot of cases and vent in you know negative comments or whatever it is. When exposed to new information, we will often stick to what we currently believe. And that's why it's very, very hard to change people's beliefs. And I don't actually recommend you try it because if someone is so committed to what they believe, just go hang out with someone else. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Like, you're going to change someone from a Democrat into a Republican, from a racist into a non racist, into a misogynist to like, no, like, People are who they are. If they want to change, cool. Don't expect you to change them, right? I think over time, people can certainly evolve if they're growth oriented and they're exposed to enough information that is able to challenge them at some level, but it takes time. It takes time. The third cognitive bias is the endowment effects. And this ties in closely with the confirmation bias. So the endowment effect is we, if we own something, we attribute more value to it because we own it. If you've ever owned a house and you sell the house, you list the price at let's call it a million dollars, but the market wants to pay you 900. But you're like, I will never consider that. This is a this is worth a million dollars because you own it and you have memories and experiences and you've put in the work to build this house, you know, whatever. Because you own it, you think it's more valuable than what the market does. There was actually an interesting study on this and they had uh, coffee cups, coffee mugs. And so for the the people who own the mug, they asked, well, how much would you sell this for? And on average, the price was $7.12. And then they asked potential buyers, here's a mug, how much would you pay for it? And the average that they gave in terms of what they were willing to pay was $2.87 for the same thing. The only difference was that those who owned the mug felt it was more valuable than those who didn't own the mug but were willing to buy one. So we had, in this case, three times more value almost right? Valuable because we own the thing. So think about this, not from necessarily a real estate perspective, but from a belief. We are so committed to our own beliefs. We believe that what we believe is more valuable because we own the belief. So if someone believes that being sold to is inherently wrong and a bad thing, and I share something that opposes that belief, those people are going to be like, what the F? That's a bunch of nonsense. That's not true. You're the problem, right? But I'm doing the same thing by doing the opposite. My belief is that if you don't like being sold to, maybe you just don't have a lot of money to begin with. And here's the thing. So this, anyways, so I'm going to come back to that in a second. So those are the three biases that I wanted to share with you here that I think really influence how we internalize or get riled up by things people say. The endowment effect, confirmation bias, and the bandwagon effect. So let me share what's worked for me in, in the sense of like navigating, like not taking things personally. Now, am I perfect here? No, because I will be honest with you. I can take things personally sometimes, right? 
So I'll just be honest. Sometimes I take things personally. And the first thing that I do is I try to lengthen the gap between the stimulus and the response. So let's say that someone uh, sends me a DM and it's not something I want to hear, or I see a comment and it's just ridiculous. If I immediately jump into response, I lose because I'm, I'm reacting to that stimulus. As soon as I step away, whether it's the phone or the computer, and I, and I give it space, five minutes, an hour, a day, a week, the longer the delay, the better the response. Because now I'm no longer reacting from emotion, I'm thinking logically, and I've let it cool off. Like, is it really that big of a deal that this person said this? Like, who cares, right? So I think that's the first and probably the most important thing to remember is you see a stimulus where something happens, how long can you delay the response? The longer the delay, the better the response is gonna be. Now, a couple of things that have worked for me. I may have mentioned this before. If not, I'll mention this again for the first time. I consider people's bigger future more than their feelings. So let me share this again. When I said, I've noticed that those who don't like being or who don't like selling or being sold to often don't have much money to spend. I am not thinking about, is this going to step on someone's toes? Is it going to hurt their feelings? Because if I play that game, I will never post anything. What I'm thinking about is by sharing this, can I get someone to maybe have a moment of reflection to say, I agree with that, whatever, or you know, maybe that, that rings true for me a little bit. Maybe can I give that some thought? Is there some truth to that for me? And I share stuff like even in these videos, like, I mean, you know, I'm very forthright. I'm very no BS straight to the point. And I know that some of the stuff I say, you know, might rub you the wrong way. I appreciate you watching and listening to this. And at the same time, I also don't really have a lot of time for the stories and the excuses and all the bullshit, right? So like all of that stuff is less important to me. Like I acknowledge it. I empathize with it. I do hundred percent, but I've just seen so much of it that it, I, I don't, it doesn't serve you. Or, or anyone. So I'm more committed to challenging someone about what's possible for their bigger future than their feelings. Number two is neutrality is power. I don't take anything personally as much as possible, especially from someone who doesn't have what I already want. So remember, like, if someone's leaving a nasty comment on your stuff, just ask yourself, is this person even like, would I take advice from them? If not, don't take their criticism. It's not about you. It's about them and their own shit. What they're telling you is like all the garbage that they can't do about them for themselves and they're putting it out on you. Don't internalize it. Don't take it personally. Just ignore it, move on or delete it if necessary. I also acknowledge if I've crossed the line and was incorrect or incomplete in my statement or position. This actually has happened quite a bit. I've, I've said something and I'm like, I see the comments and I'm like, you know what? That's actually correct. Like your, your statements in response to my statements is something I didn't consider. Thank you. I acknowledge that because I don't have all the answers. I would rather have better questions than have all the answers as opposed to have all the answers and no questions. So I'm I'm very self-aware that I'm making some brash statements, but I'm also aware that that's not the whole empirical truth a lot of times. I'm just sharing what I've noticed in my life. And if someone brings truth to surface, I'll acknowledge that. But if they, if they, if they just regurgitate bullshit that makes no sense, I'll challenge them on that, okay? Okay, the other thing too is like, the final thing is I remind myself that 90% of people say nothing and they just enjoy the experience as opposed to being all the ones who are like make negative comments. So the example earlier, as I said, if you've got 100 people on your email list and one person sends you uh, like unsubscribe me from its e the, this email list and you all of a sudden are like, oh, I'm not gonna email my list anymore because one person unsubscribed, you're missing the bigger picture. You're allowing one person, 1% 1 or half a percent of people on your email list in your community to affect everyone else who's getting benefit from it. One negative comment on an ad to completely change your business model. Don't allow the few to affect the experience of the many. And very often the people you are not hearing from are the ones who are enjoying your stuff the most. So if you know you are doing good work in the world, if you know that you are sharing your truth, even though it's gonna step on some toes, you gotta shine your light. Not everyone's gonna agree with you and quite honestly, the more pushback you get and the more hate you get, quote unquote, the more you know you are doing the work you deserve to be doing. Because if you're not doing any of that stuff and you're just trying to appease everyone, well, we don't need any more of that. We don't need more vanilla. We need some more vanilla with caramel ribbon. Just be you, right? Be you to the fullest. And that's the message that I wanna get across in this video. I've stopped taking everything so personally. Be you, 
You're gonna, you're gonna step on some toes, but you will help so many more people by sharing your truth, okay? So anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Today, we're gonna to talk about the champion's mindset. A few weeks ago, I was watching the US Open final, tennis that is, Novak Djokovic won his 24th Grand Slam. It's amazing to see what champions like him do differently than everyone else.